Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Norm. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. But today is another episode of This Old Blower. You might have seen this in another video. It is extremely dirty. There is more dirt and debris on this than I've seen on many other blowers. The air filter is completely saturated and so much blow by on this. It does actually start and run. The spark plug cap broke off of here, so I put a temporary cap on here. The elbow itself has seen better days, but the first thing I'm gonna do is get this thing cleaned up and hopefully get this thing back to its prior glory. But before I get too far along, I am just gonna remove this blower tube because uh, I do have a new one, and this is just going to make me mad. This will just make this a lot less annoying to have to move around. Basically pretty stuck on here, but hopefully, there we go, get that off. I don't want to break that because I don't want to be buying a new handle for this bad boy. Work out the extension tube. I should roll this guy back. There we go. It is just a friction fit. And just take that hose off, just like that. Good for the dump. The guy who owns it said, ah, don't worry, I'm in no hurry. Pro tip here, don't tell your small engine mechanic that you're in no hurry, because they're not gonna be in any hurry either. So I'm not exactly sure what's in this degreaser, but I decided I'd rather put on some gloves because, man, it is cutting through this huge amount of grease all over this thing. I've seen worse. So the spark plug cap had broken off of this thing. This is just a temporary one off of one of my scooters till I could get the right one. Ooh. Nice and nasty in there. The fact that it starts and runs, in my opinion, is pretty much of a miracle. When I first got this and put that temporary spark plug cap on there, it had about 125 PSI, as I recall. So there's no reason that this shouldn't be a good blower for a good long time. So it's better. It's not 100%. but it's a thousand percent better than it was. I get it, the math doesn't add up, but math never was one of my strong suits. But it makes sense if you don't think about it. I don't think this sad little machine, ooh, has seen any service in its entire little life. So I let this beauty sit out in the sun for several hours, and um, it is a resistor cap, uh, but that was just enough to test it. I'm going to replace the boot on here. It is a Stins. I'm using 135519, original replacement. Not exactly, but it's close enough. The way this works is there is a little pin wire that actually goes in, and you stab 
the spark plug wire. I think I'm gonna have to trim that little boot part off because it's got a little boot, so I think I'd put that back on there and not worry about it too much. And since I shoved this other type, it has a screw on the end. It screws in there, so I'm gonna trim off just maybe two or three millimeters of this. So I have a good clean end there, which means I'm gonna have to poke this in a new hole about the same amount back. All right, maybe two or three millimeters. See if I can get that uh, without, without it flying everywhere and without poking my own finger. So had I not mangled the end of this up with those, um, with that other screw on cap, I don't think I'd have to be going through all this rigmarole here. Oops. Now that just went through the outer insulation. That didn't go straight through the wire. Try it this way. So I know it's going right into the center. I'm pretty sure I've got this to go through the center of the copper wire. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see the meter, but I've got it set for continuity on the beeper. I'm sure you can hear the beeper. So I'm gonna put one end on the spark plug cap and the other end on the end of the spark plug wire. And you can see or here, hopefully, there's good continuity there. I don't want to trim this off because this is the smaller wire right here, but I might have to because I do have this little guy right here. Trim that off just a little bit. Hopefully, I'll fit on there a little bit better. A couple of drops of uh, silicone oil to help lubricate that. And hopefully, this I can get this to, this is kind of the hard part just to get all that to go in that tiny little hole. Actually, I'm gonna hold it with my pliers. All right, I don't even see that or not, but the, the coils have spun a little bit in there. There was this little bit of, you know, flash rubber that didn't come off, so I had to dig that out of there. I can see that the spark plug boot is perfectly in there. And this fits there. And I'm going to give it a 180 of a turn. So it should fit just fine. All right. And before we get too far along, I do want to check and make sure I got good spark. It's kind of hard to do without the cover on here. maybe needs a new spark plug, but at least we got spark happening. All right, get this old spark plug out of here. As I recall, yeah, it's sort of chocolatey brown, but you know, there's a lot of soot all over it. So we'll just replace that. The old spark plug is a R, CJ6Y, which is a resistor plug, and I mean, I'm assuming it's the same plug, I don't know, but I'll double check the specs, but we'll put a new one in, and hopefully we'll see good spark. Not much, just trying to compress that crush washer. All right, one more time with feeling. Okay, good spark. So I don't remember the condition of this spark arrestor, but that needs to be cleaned as well. Oh yeah, see how clogged up that is? Get out the old torch, propane, and we're gonna fire this thing until it's absolutely red hot and all of that accumulated carbon turns to ash. And simply blow off the ash. 
with shop air. It's cool enough to hold. And I don't know if you can see that or not. There's still a little bit of debris stuck in there. I'm going to go one more round and then call it a day. Far better than it was. So this goes back in. And this little clamp almost seems unnecessary, but that'll hold it on there. Awesome. So the last time I had this fuel filter out, it did not look so bad. But from the best I can tell, this thing has not had any maintenance ever. Not terribly crunchy, but it's also not terribly giving. It has been dry for quite a while. I'm going to give this little hair dryer action in hopes to uh, soften up that fuel line just a little bit. About a minute of that ought to be just enough. There we go. Perfect. This is a um, Zama. Doesn't quite look like the new one, but this is the ZF4, which is what is called for on this machine. It is a tight fit, but it's a good fit. And that's all I care about. Fuel tank is completely dry, but we will remedy that soon. Make sure that lays flat in there. And I do believe the final frontier is going to be the carburetor. All right, I've seen worse. We got most of that off with the cleaning, so we might be good to go there. Tore up that gasket just a little bit. That'll probably be all right. Pull that throttle cable out, and hopefully not to mess up another gasket. And see if we can get this little bad boy to pop off of here. There we go. Nice. Didn't damage that gasket in the back, which is good. Turned into a crazy cold few days here. There we go. Much easier. There's one little bad spot on that gasket. It might be all right. And back to my favorite cleaning solution, which is old bad gasoline. Look at all the water in that. Crazy, isn't it? I'm just going to get the big crud off of here before I start opening up any plates or gaskets because I do have a rebuild kit. I guess a precaution because it was actually running not well, but I'm sure a new diaphragm and pump will help dramatically. So if the noise is not too loud in the background, my neighbor is out with his electric blower <laughs> cleaning the leaves off of his roof. How ironic. And I hope none of these gaskets get torn up. This diaphragm right here, all these little wrinkles, it's very crunchy. So time for that to come off. Oh, yes, and it came off in one clean piece. That is awesome. Just a couple of little bits of gasket right there. Nothing really. It's a little bit there on that surface, but that's fine. There we go. That was a little tight on there. Take off the needle and the lever and the pin. 
I don't know if you can see that or not, but that really doesn't look bad to me. We have all the kit to replace all this. I'm going to hit all those little passages with a little bit of carb spray. The pump is, you know, it's got some sort of bad chunky stuff in there. And there's a little bit of debris inside that screen, which uh, we can replace anyway with the new kit. Oh well, yeah, it's just a little bit of discoloration. That's nothing actually on that surface there. Not bad, not bad. A little bit of debris on there. There are no chunky bits that are going to fall into anything, so I think we're good there. Make sure that passage is clear. That is not dirt and debris in there, so I think that's going to be all right. A little bit of discoloration there. There's no debris there. Not really sure what that's from. Maybe just old bad gas. Make sure a little bit of carb spray in one hole comes out another. I'm going to make sure that's all nice and clear through there. I do see something. It looks like a little bit of debris. A big old leaf chunk stuck in there. That's nice. Get a little bit of that gasket off of there. Because that will cause an air leak for sure. That's clear. That's clear. Oop, see right at me. That's why. That's why I wear safety glasses. Surprisingly, you know, after all these years, it's not that bad. This particular carburetor takes a K10 HD Walbro kit. I'm going to start with the fuel pump side. And just double check. We're going to make sure everything looks identical. It does. And we're going to dig out the correct gasket for this guy. Do, 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 do. So this one, I do believe is the rubbery gasket that's there. And I think this guy is pretty good about using ethanol-free fuel. Oh, and before I forget, because I've done this once before, we need to get the fuel inlet screen set. I've done that one too many times, I'm embarrassed to admit. Get that going in straight and flush. And I take the back side. Just breather right here and just make sure that it's all the way flush to the bottom. Don't push it too far. You want to make sure that that passage is clear and it's below there. This goes on oops, that way. Easy to mess up. Just got to make sure that all the holes line up. Same thing with the gasket. I'm going to make sure the pump portion right here aligns with that right there. And there are two alignment pins on here that have to fit through all these. Make sure you're not pinching anything. Good and tight. I'll pressure test this before I'm done. Now this new kit. Hmm. I thought it came with a spring, but maybe it does not. Maybe I overlooked it. Spring fits in that little indentation. Going to get the new pin. Needle. And carefully. Try to drop all that in in one fell swoop. Not bad. You can see this is an HD carburetor and on this gauge you have to read 
HD on this side right here. So without any gaskets on here, you want to make sure, see there or not? I do not see it engaging that at all. Yeah, it might be engaging it just a hair. But I think that is perfect. In order to test this for pressure testing, it should be empty but not dry. So hopefully, just a couple of drops of two-stroke fuel mix in here, not be completely dry in order to pressure test this. There are two alignment pins, but you can see. And that curve right there matches the curve on the top of the carburetor. Alignment pins go in. So I'm a little pressure tester here with a, a Mighty Vac brake bleeder kit. Has a little pressure outlet there. And I just got a little 15 PSI. Couple little pumps. Up to about uh, between seven and eight. And it's coming down a little slow. That's the needle and seat. It's probably because it's dry in there, but I think it's going to be all right. I might just have a leak. Now it's settled down. Maybe my little tester is leaky. Yeah, if I hold it still. I think we're good. All right, that seems clean in there. And that gasket seems to be all right. We're going to reattach the fuel line. There's another screw here somewhere. There it is. Get these going through the carb. That looks good. I don't need to show you me hooking the throttle cable up again, but it's easy enough to do it right there. I really don't want to cross thread these. Make sure they get started first. There we go. Make sure that that air intake is sticking through there. Make sure none of those lines are fouled. Tank vent looks good. Get these guys off of here. This was just temporary. Take the spark plug off of there. Make sure all that is nice and centered. The choke, not fouling. Nothing like putting these screws back where they came from. That was obviously the one right under the carb. It was a pretty significant amount of spit back there. Pro tip here, try not to lose these captive screws. Don't ask me how I know how expensive these are. When you lose them, I'm embarrassed to say. And in all honesty, um, it was another person's piece of equipment that I just gave him one of these screws because I loosened it too far and too fast. That's my own fault. This is Sten's 102-412. This is the pre-filter. Sten's makes really good aftermarket parts. And as you can see, yeah, it's in a lot better shape. And the actual air filter itself is Sten's part number 102414. That presses all the way in, all the way around. Give a little premix fuel in here. It's a little 45 to 1. Uh, I might have to mix up some more. The fuel filter is sitting in fuel, but I would do myself a favor, I'm sure, to mix up just a little more fuel. I'm not exactly sure if this is 
50 to 1 or 40 to 1. It really doesn't matter. That's why I always just mix for testing purposes. 45 to 1, which is good enough. For the small amount of time I'm going to be running this thing, I'm not going to blow this thing up with a little more, a little less. It's about, oh, it's almost a liter. I think that's about high enough. And we're going to put in just enough fuel. Oh, it got tight. To cover that fuel filter because it's just barely covered up. So surprisingly, I was able to find the uh, new elbow for this. I think it was off of eBay, but uh, like less than $30. So I thought that would be better than a bunch of nasty old duct tape. And if you ever do need to order these things, um, of course, it has the right part number, but it's also, you have to go by the right diameter because they have two different styles for this guy. Got to make sure you get the right one. Get this just started. And unfortunately, for this guy, I didn't replace this. I'm sure there's something else I can do to hold the um, throttle cables on there. We'll figure out something later, not now. And this guy just slides right on there. And he's not coming off. That's good. So I was wondering why the display on my phone was looking so dim. That's well, because I was down to 1% battery. Anyway, you didn't need to see me putting all this together. The trigger goes back on. Old tube. New elbow. And I sort of just made sort of a little wire tied little thing for that. You didn't need to see all that. Throw on, on, uh, choke. Ha! Huh, good sign already. a good I don't know three or four minutes to warm up it's been a long time since this thing's been running all right I've got about five minutes so let's give it a whirl I'm going to double check she hot starts okay, which I'm sure it will. She said. Oh, I guess it helps if you turn the kill switch off.
Idle seat speed sounds kind of high to me, and it is around 3,700, and I can't find any specs on this, but according to the specs for a BR500, it should be 3,000 off the road. They've just increased the idle speed to overcome bad air filter, clogged fuel filter, whatever. There you go. That's certainly a little closer to 3,000. Wow, sure gets dark pretty fast this time of year. I hope this guy's happy. His blower is running like a champ, almost brand new, especially with that new elbow on there. He should be good to go for many, many years. If you have one of the newer steels, like the BR500, 600, the Formix range, you're gonna have to adjust the valves on those as well. If you wanna know how to do that, you can watch this video right here. Mo happy. Oh, I guess I should say blow happy. Thanks for watching.